We are quite a pair. Two years ago, we were pronounced husband and wife. And you're still my wife. Only now, I'm your husband. <laughs> and when we first met five years ago, I was a pre-transition transsexual, and you were calling yourself bisexual. And we gallivanted around Berkeley and Oakland disguised as a straight couple. We had so much fun with the roles of boy and girl. We gave Oscar-winning performances. I wore the condoms and you the diaphragm, and we'd ham it up in the sack. No one else has ever made me laugh so much during sex. And afterwards, we'd lay in that cliche post-coital pose. You'd curl your body up along my side, and I'd wrap my arm around you as if I was protecting you from something. And these days when we strike the same pose, your head rests on my developing breasts. When I cradle you in my arms, I feel almost maternal. And if sometimes it's like I'm your mother, then other times, you're my obnoxious younger brother. Who knew that you, a radical feminist dyke, could get such eighth grader amusement out of snapping the backs of my bra straps? <laughs> or giving my breasts a quick squeeze away, Harper Marx honks his horn. <laughs> and forgive the pun, but it really does make me horny. And if sometimes you're my younger brother, then other times you're my big sister, guiding me with advice, sharing all the things that you learned having reached womanhood before me. And if anyone were to ask this ex-boy what it's like to be in a lesbian relationship, I would say it feels kind of like being sisters, best friends, and lovers simultaneously. And I know that when most people see a same-sex couple, they always try to figure out who's the butch and who's the femme, as if all queer people were latent heterosexuals. <laughs> More often than not, they base their impression on hairstyle. But we keep them second-guessing. Your short hair is dyed a fabulous bright red and often accessorized with barrettes too cute for most preschoolers. And I often wear my long curly hair tied back in a practical ponytail. I guess I'm the femme tomboy and you're the butch girly girl. <laughs> and I know that when most people think of lesbian sex, they imagine lots and lots of cuddling. <laughs> and we do some of that in between the tickling and the squeezing and the biting and the coming. And let's not forget all the musical numbers, comedy routines, and sex toys. <laughs> and sometimes I wrap a strap on over my real McCoy and I fuck you with all the sweetness of a girl and the aggression of a boy. And sometimes you like it when you're on top. And sometimes you ask me to tie you up. And I'll never forget the time that you turned bondage into a magic act. While well, I stepped into the other room for a minute, you undid your knots and sprung to your feet like Houdini shouting, ta-da! Like I said, when we have sex, you crack me up. Our love is like a long list of seemingly contradictory anecdotes. Before I transitioned, our apartment doorbell was labeled with our names, Tom Serrano and Danny Your Enemy. But our landlord misspelled your name, D-A-N-N-Y, and we joke that we are secretly two gay boys. <laughs> Our love transcends all categories, all orientations, and all identities. Our love is not about me being this and you being that. We are not merely each other's better half. No, we are everything to one another. Some people insist that opposites attract, but I'm not so sure about that. I'm no longer impressed with boy versus girl, butch versus femme. I found that I can be any of those things. It just depends on what mood I'm in. And I used to be really into the idea of tops and bottoms, dominants and submissives. But these days, I get off on the fact that we're both such perfect switches. And no matter how you serve it, our love is always delicious because we mix and match. <laughs>